Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole McGuire and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about my filming setup, what I use to film, kind of the equipment I use to edit, the lighting I use, the microphone I use, everything that goes into making a YouTube video, I'm gonna talk about. So if you wanna see more, stay tuned. Don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up if you like it or you wanna see more content like this. It really helps me out as a small creator. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video, which right now is at the pace of about twice a week. Um, I'm just getting over being really, really sick, so I'm just trying to take it one day at a time, one step at a time, but definitely a new video every week is my goal, maybe two. <laughs> so what I'm going to talk about first is actually the camera I'm using to film. Currently, I'm using a Sony a7 II. Uh, this was a camera I actually originally bought for photography. Um, I should have gotten the A7 III if I was thinking about it because this camera doesn't have a flip out screen and it can't record the highest quality of video. However, with the different lenses I have and kind of the setup that I have for my photography hobby, it was perfect for YouTube in terms of getting the highest quality video. Um, and if I'm filming a sit down video like this, um, it's definitely the camera I'm gonna use. It doesn't have a flip out screen, so it's not really one I would recommend if you're getting a camera just for YouTube. But if you want a camera that does well for photography as well as video making, I'd highly recommend the next version of this camera, which is the a7 III. So one of the things I really like about this camera is that it has interchangeable lenses. So the lens I'm using right now is called the SLR Magic, um, and it's a 52 millimeter lens. So it gets this beautiful crisp image here while the background is blurry, which is what I like for sit down videos. And I've actually been working a lot with this lens. One of the problems is it doesn't have autofocus and with no flip out screen, I kind of have to like focus on where I think I'm gonna sit and then hope that my video is in focus. This has definitely been hard. Some of my videos haven't been in focus for the whole video or like I might move back or forward. So again, it's not easy, but I love the way it looks. Another lens I love to use is this, I believe it's a 29 millimeter. Um, and it's just really good for wide angle shots if I wanna get more in the picture. Um, and I can show you like a little test shot, I guess, with this on it. And then lastly, I just use the lens that came with it. It is a, I believe it's 25 through 58 lens. Um, and it's really great for autofocus. I just find that it's not the most quality lens um, and I don't think it gets as beautiful a picture of this one. This is called a mirrorless camera. Um, it's kind of like a DSLR, but lighter, but it is still kind of heavy. So I tend not to use this if I'm vlogging or if I'm just making a quick video where I really need to see the screen or if I'm moving around a lot. So I really just use this video if I'm sitting down, having a chit chat with you, um, like this video. So that is my Sony camera. And then on top, I have a Rode mic that I plug into the camera. I just think this gives me better audio. I think it makes it crisper. And audio is one of the things that I really care about in my YouTube videos. The next camera I have is the Sony RX103. And the reason I got this one is because it has a flip up screen. So I tend to use this for vlogging or if I'm making a video where I'm moving around a lot and I really need to make sure I'm in the frame, this is the camera I use. I'm not sure if I would recommend this camera. I actually got it on like super sale on my trip to London. The problem with this camera is that you can't use external audio with it as well as you can't change the lenses. So you have to make sure the lighting's really good to make sure the quality of the video is gonna be good. But in terms of autofocus and making sure I'm in the frame, this is what I use. It's also a lot lighter, so I like to use it for vlogging. Next up is my tripod. I originally had this tripod from Target and it worked fine. I think it was like $29. So it was a great starter tripod, but I found especially for photography that it just wasn't cutting it and I felt it was a little flimsy. So I was scared to put my very expensive mirrorless camera on it. But when I was in Europe, I actually forgot to bring my tripod. So I needed to buy a new one anyway. So I ended up going for this Benro one, which I feel like is a really nice investment. I think it was about a hundred dollars or was it a hundred pounds? I think it might've been a hundred pounds and I converted. I can't quite remember, but it feels really sturdy. It feels really stable. I haven't had any issues with it and I really like it. I also think it looks cooler and it definitely feels sturdier. So lastly, for my setup here, I also have this soft box. Uh, I don't know if like that the light is actually coming from right here. Um, and I bought this on Amazon as a two pack for about $79. It actually arrived, one of them was completely shattered. So I had to order a second box, but then I wasn't able to ship the first one back. So somewhere in this house, I have two more of these softbox lights, but for the life of me, I can't find them in all the boxes. 
but I find, especially if I'm using backlighting where there's a window or a, in this case, a door behind me, it's really nice to make sure I'm the focal point of the video and just add some more visual contrast between me and the background. But I originally got them not even just to improve my camera quality, but because I really wanted to film at night. And night is awful lighting. You just have the overhead lights. Um, and I just didn't feel comfortable putting that video out. But if you're not ready to get a light, I'd say just sit yourself in front of a big window and use natural lighting. Whatever camera you have, good lighting is going to make it better. Uh, in photography, it's really just the capture of light. So I think light's one of the most important things and it's one thing that I'm definitely going to continue in, to invest in as I go along. So now we've prepared for our video. I've set the camera up, I've set the mic up, the lighting up. Next step is finding a good space. And this is something I'm still working on. We just moved into the house about a month ago and I haven't unpacked fully yet. And also not all of our furniture that we've ordered has arrived. So finding a filming spot has been very hard, especially in this room where there's so many windows. But if I were to go like use the lighting from the windows, I would just be in front of this really boring door. So instead I've chosen to sit here and front light myself because there is some backlighting and just hope for the best. Probably as it goes on, I'm gonna switch my spot around, try and see what looks the best, what background tells the best story and assists with the message I wanna put out in each video. I'm just gonna play around with it and have fun and find a good spot. I like to make sure the door is closed. My dog is out of the room as she likes, she has a very dangly tag and I'll just sit and make myself comfortable and film my video. So after my video has now been filmed, I take it over to my desk. So this is my personal laptop. I use Final Cut Pro. I used to use iMovie, but I just found that it was really limiting in what I could do. So it has been a journey to try and learn Final Cut Pro, but it's one that I have fun taking. And I also plug it into this 10 terabyte external hard drive. My computer storage is always full. So I like to make sure that I'm storing my videos in a backup drive and I'm not killing my computer. Eventually I wanna get a portable external hard drive so that I can really use the portability of the laptop and make sure I take it around because right now this uh, external hard drive actually needs to be plugged in on its own. So it's definitely not one that I could take around and I believe there are spinning discs inside of it. So it's not something I feel comfortable kind of like throwing in a bag. Um, but I have gotten some great recommendations, but if you have some, please drop them down in the comments below because I'm really, really, really <laughs> trying to find a good one without breaking the bank. In terms of planning my videos, I really like using my iPad Pro. It's really helpful for kind of rearranging stuff a lot instead of trying to like erase things or scratch things out with a pen. And I like that it kind of feels like a notebook when you write. I think this was the first iPad Pro. I actually got it when I was working as an intern at Apple as a software engineer. So if you guys wanna hear about that, let me know. I'd love to talk more about that. It was a pretty fun story and I got it on a huge discount, uh, but it's not the newest one, um, but it still works for me. So that's what I use to plan my videos. And I think that's everything. Once I upload them, I actually like to go downstairs on my big TV and watch it and then watch it on my phone as well so I can see the difference between a big screen and a small screen for how the video looks. And then for creating the thumbnail, I've actually just been using PicMonkey. I have Photoshop, I really need to learn how to use it, but PicMonkey just makes it so easy. This is not an ad, this is not sponsored, I just really like it. Um, I pay, I think it's $70.99 for the premium version, and I get stock photos, I get all the fonts, I get like everything unlocked, and I can download without a watermark. So if you're looking for something that isn't Photoshop, I recommend PicMonkey, and I just need to start learning Photoshop because my I will say my thumbnails are starting to look a little boring. So. I think that's everything for filming a video. Hopefully this has helped some of you get some inspiration of what kind of camera to get or how to adapt the camera you already have into something you can use for YouTube. I love it. I create content just because I think it's fun. I love the process of filming. I love the process of editing. I love uploading it and interacting with people and just the community it creates. I'm still a small YouTuber, so I'm definitely not getting paid or sponsored in any way. So I hope if you're watching me and you're thinking, should I start a YouTube video or a YouTube channel? My answer is absolutely yes. It's so fun. And if you wanna drop a comment down below and let me know if it's your first video, I'd love to check out your channel. If you have any recommendations for a new camera or a new lens or any sort of equipment I missed, leave that as a comment too. I'm always looking to upgrade my setup. 
So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Again, it really, really helps me as a small creator. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm so, so close to 600 subscribers. Um, and that's just my big next big milestone. So please help me get there. And then turn on that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.